let's talk storytelling. It's, it's an anchor part of the business and the coaching that I provide to my clients. Uh, there are many different types of stories, and one that I encourage business owners and entrepreneurs to develop is called, by many names, I like to use the word origin story. I like the origin story because it will help connect you to an audience when, uh, at first glance, you may not have anything in common with them. I see this with experienced business owners especially. What the origin story does, it, it describes the roots of why you do what you do. For example, as a storyteller and a presentation skills coach and, and professional speaker myself, my origin story is this. When I was a little guy, I used to love to make people laugh. I still do. But a little guy, I like to make people laugh, and mom was my favorite audience. And if I could make mom laugh, I, I've done something really good for the day. She has a great sense of humor, and that was always my goal, make mom laugh. When I was in first grade, that changed a bit. It was a an overcast, actually rainy uh, fall afternoon. It was around one o'clock in the afternoon. The lights in Mrs. North's first grade class were dim. All the kids were resting their heads on their desks. All but one, he was standing on his desk because as Mrs. North had said, Michael, since you love standing on your desk so much at lunchtime, you get to stand on your desk at nap time so everybody can see you. Now, this was 1969, the heart of the Apollo Space Program. I was a huge fan of that uh, institution. So it was raining during recess that day, so I decided to practice my aeronautical skills by jumping on my desk and flying around. I thought it was a great idea. Mrs. North had a different perspective, so she made me stand on my desk during nap time. When I first stood up there, I thought, okay, this will be no big deal. But the longer I stood there, the more embarrassed and the more difficult the experience became. What do you think my friends were doing up on uh, while I was standing on that desk? Supposedly they were taking a nap, but they were silently taunting me. I mean, making faces and pointing and laughing. I don't know why Mrs. North didn't catch them doing that when she caught me on top of a desk, but that's another story. So the longer I was up there, the worse this experience became. I don't know how long I stood on that desk. It was literally 50 years ago. But I do know this. When I stepped down, I said to myself, don't ever stand in front of people again. That was, it. That was awful. That was embarrassing. That experience held me back for the next 25 years. In elementary school, I wanted to play in the school band, but I didn't quite put in the effort because in the back of my mind, I knew that people would be watching me. When I was in high school, I thought about going to the drama club. Again, love to make people laugh and act, but somewhere in the subconscious, I knew that people would be looking at me. Too embarrassing. I even considered going to a comedy club in college and trying an open mic night. You can guess what my mind was telling me. Don't do that. That's very embarrassing. And it wasn't until I was 30, let's see, 31 years old, sitting in my boss's office when I had to, to deal with this fear of standing in front of people and speaking. My job was literally on the line if I didn't fix the problem. Again, that's another story. But my origin story is what you just heard. Love to make people laugh, had an embarrassing situation that got rooted in my nervous system, my subconscious, and convinced me that standing in front of other people is embarrassing, humiliating, and will only feel awful. Never do it again. When I share that story in workshops or in presentations, I immediately connect to the audience. When you hold yourself out as a coach and a professional speaker and author like I can do now, that can separate you from an audience at first. They may think, well, he was born that way. He, he's a natural up there. No, it took a lot of work just to manage the fear and get past all that negativity about standing in front of groups. That's where I connect with people. No longer do I have a title of author, speaker, coach. It's, hey, here's a guy who's just like me. If he did it, so can I. So whatever your, your, your job title, your position is, Share your origin story with people that connects you with them. Let them hear about your fears, your difficulties, what I like to call your strife, struggles, setbacks. And there's one other word I can't remember right now. It's Friday. Give me a break. <laughs> but 
talk about those experiences that were hard on you and that you learned from and overcame. Leave some comments below. Would love to hear your origin story and how you got through difficult times and became a success. Have a great day.